So what do you do? How do you, how do you usually introduce yourself to people? So I do math. Uh, my area is called topology. The type of topology that I do is called homotopy theory. I study high dimensional shapes. A homotopy type is a whole collection of spaces that are all equivalent to each other. Anything in, in more than three spatial dimensions just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Uh, it, <laughs> was it hard to get used to that <laughs> when you were uh, starting out? Yeah, I think it's one of those things where you don't necessarily get used to it, but you stop worrying about it. How, how did you decide that you want to do math? Did yeah. you always know? Um, no, I didn't always know. Uh, and in fact, you know, I distinctly remember in grade school being in remedial math class because uh, I was a lot slower at arithmetic. Than really? Kids. Yeah, I was just like really not good at it. So I, I knew that I was sort of interested in science. I thought I might do physics or chemistry. And in college, I took a calculus class that sort of changed everything that I thought about math. I took a topology class. Yeah, I, I really liked that it was, it was about shapes that you can't visualize. And so you have to have mm. something else to understand them. Get it with your mind. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I found that the more math classes I took, I became more interested in math and I became less interested in physics. Somebody told me that there was such a thing as graduate school. I like doing math. Maybe I should keep doing math. Somebody told me that you could just keep on doing math. <laughs> so that's just what I'm keep doing. Going. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I think it's very creative and I like that it has a bit more certainty to it in some way. I really like solving problems. I like solving all kinds of problems. And uh, math, yeah. you know, gives you lots of interesting problems to think about uh, and sometimes solve. It's I like how you say sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not all the time. In high school, we had an interesting situation where the, the longtime calculus teacher at our high school retired. And, and so we had a new calculus teacher. This particular guy was really struggling to teach it. It was his first time. And so he wasn't really doing much. And um, it was the first time that I opened a math book and just tried to read it because it was the first time that my teacher wasn't just telling me how to do every problem. And I remember really enjoying it. I just, I thought, wow. So, I don't know if I've ever done that myself. Just started reading one of my math, one of my math books. <laughs> I, I mean, it's funny that it's such a crazy idea, but I, I really don't think people read them. This must have taken a while to draw. Did you do this in your classroom or something? Uh, that, uh, uh, that, that chalkboard is in my kitchen. Uh, I'm working on sort of campus outreach uh, event. And so I was just trying to think through how to, how to present my research in a way that is accessible and interesting. So I was thinking about that and I was thinking about something I read by Bill Thurston. Mathematics is what mathematicians do. Mathematicians are people that explain things. And I, I like that he sort of puts that human connection in there. He goes on to say that, um, you know, what mathematicians are explaining is um, is shapes and numbers, uh, patterns in shapes and numbers. But then he also says, of course, you need to explain the things that you need to understand in order to explain shapes and numbers, that you need to understand in order to understand the things that you need to understand in order to <laughs> understand shapes and numbers. Uh, and, it doesn't and so, go on forever. <laughs> yeah, so, so definitely there's kind of this recursive nature to it. I saw like on your, on your CV that you teach a lot of classes for teachers. Um, that yes. must be really interesting, teaching teachers. Does somebody teach you how to teach the teachers? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> it's uh, another interesting uh, chain, yeah. <laughs> recursive. So what is I, that like? It's wild. It's really different from teaching uh, the kinds of classes that I taught as a graduate student. And it was while I was a postdoc that I, I worked with someone who uh, sort of made it her job to teach mathematicians how to teach teachers. Sort of recognize that there needs to be more engagement of mathematicians with education. Yeah, so she's been doing this for a while. Her name is Sibylla Beckman. She's super. I think one of the sort of, I don't know, uh, side benefits of, of studying math is that it does teach you how to solve a lot of problems and it kind of, uh, it can be very empowering, you know, to uh, learn what you can do with pure thought. For me anyway, it makes me less likely to be afraid of other things. That's a really good way to sell math. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Have I experienced fear? Yes. Um, so <laughs> times when I've realized that something I thought was right is in fact not right, that's a terrible feeling. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> not only do you not know what to do, you don't even know what to do in order to figure out what to do. I think my own way to get out of it is just to kind of bring things back to the simplest possible case that I can sort of try to understand. You have to solve the problems you can solve in order to sort of work up to the problems that you can't solve. You've been interviewing a few mathematicians. Do you have some kind of 
observation <laughs> about mathematicians. I figured it might help me learn more about math and like what math is. Also to maybe help me get over my math anxiety a bit too by talking about it more openly. If I thought it was so terrible, but other people love it so much that they want to do it all day long, you know, <laughs> more than anything, it's been just a great reminder that mathematicians are people too. I found it really funny that uh, other, other people who do math for a living can be bad at arithmetic and that that's fine. Math and physics definitely seems to be a theme and certainty about liking math fairly early on seems to be a theme. Those sound fairly representative, I guess, of, of the mathematicians that I know. What makes math beautiful. So so I knew this was coming because I uh, <laughs> saw it in your other interviews. So the first thing I want to say is I think this is a question that's hard to answer just because beauty is hard to articulate. I think things that are beautiful, things that somehow hold more meaning than maybe first appears. Yeah, maybe in particular in mathematics, things that somehow capture different ideas, uh, sort of wide ranging ideas, you know, in a rel relatively uh, concise way. So Euler's formula, uh, that connects the complex exponential with the trig function. I think it's fair to say that from that that is objectively beautiful <laughs> in the sense Object that objectively <laughs> it's definitely beautiful. It, it connects different ideas. Oh, what's your favorite definition of math? I really like Thurston's idea of, of math as explaining shapes and numbers and then the things that explain those things. Mathematics is about explaining patterns and that means all patterns. So the patterns in the explanations of the patterns. Oh, uh, that's a cool twist. Patterns in the explanations. I might be teaching a, a really small volunteer math oh, yeah. class and yeah. I won't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any advice? I think actually just being excited about the material is, is the thing that matters. Being prepared also <laughs> matters. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, to be prepared, letting the excitement come through really changes how people interact with the material. And this was true of me for a little while. I'm excited about the research that I'm doing. I really like teaching things that are kind of connected to my research. So teaching a graduate class was super fun. Teaching a class for education majors, I didn't see any of the things that I had been excited about in my other teaching experiences. It's easy, I think, to let that make you bored with the class that you're teaching. But fortunately, because I had some really wonderful guidance, I thought about it long enough to realize what's in there that is really exciting and interesting to help students realize that mathematics is about explaining why things are true. There's the procedure that you learn, and then there's the meaning behind the procedure. I think what's important to realize is that mathematics is neither of those two things, but it's the connection between them. My favorite example of this is actually place value arithmetic. So there's a theory there about, you know, representing numbers in base 10, and that theory is important to know, but, but I don't think that theory is the mathematics. And then there's a procedure, say, for the way you multiply, and that's not the mathematics either. Then there's the explanation for why that procedure works, kind of seeing that connection, that's the mathematics. And of course, you can't know the mathematics without knowing both of those things. Well, this brings me to a, actually a question I had for you, which is the Khan Academy stuff. How does that figure into this month? Like, what do you think for you have been the benefits? I guess the reason I ask this is because, because I think of arithmetic as a little tiny piece of mathematics. So I could imagine an approach where a person kind of tries to skip the arithmetic and just, I mean, just start learning topology. You don't need any arithmetic. It's, uh, yeah. you know, so I wasn't sure how much of my, my math anxiety was really just arithmetic anxiety. Aside from, from you and some other online friends, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody else I could talk to about, you know, oh, I just read this awesome essay about topology in this book and there's beautiful proof and I, and I really want to share it with you and I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have anyone to say that to, really. I would try to tell my dad about it, but he probably wouldn't want to stick around long enough to really understand the proof with me. <laughs> And nobody else I know would either. But on the right? but on the other hand, arithmetic, I feel the impact of that anxiety every day. I go, you know, to a mm. restaurant, I have to pay the tip, or shopping at the grocery store, all those little things. I just want I wanted to be a bit more confident. You had mentioned being a bit slower in, in math or early on, like maybe just arithmetic. How do you feel about it now? Are you pretty good at it? Or do you always take out your calculator? Do you do it in your head or what? Um. So I always tell my students, I'm, I'm just no good with numbers. I think I'm better now than I used to be. Pretty good at adding, actually. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, when I say pretty good, I mean, I can do all the single digit sums. Uh, nice. <laughs> How about subtraction? 
<laughs> I'm actually pretty good at subtraction. I think the reason that subtraction seems harder is you have to be able to recognize more forms, mm -hmm. sort of A minus B for more values of A and B. The idea is to sort of think of numbers in triples. 5, 8, and 13 is actually my favorite. I just love it. Um, That's so. your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you mentioned that actually as, as one you don't like. And then later I learned that 5, 8, and 13 are Fibonacci numbers and they appear in the Fibonacci sequence. Anyway, they show up there. And so no, fun. that is not all. I <laughs> did not make that connection. <laughs> wow, thank you. That actually <laughs> might make it easier for me to remember uh, 5 plus 8. I'm kind of curious also about your wall of questions and kind of what you thought the particular value of that was. So wall of questions is... They're kind of mostly oh, yeah. gone, <laughs> but I uh, I plan to actually get, I have some tape, so I'm going to get some uh -huh. and actually put it back up, decorate my apartment. That's <laughs> reason number one. The reason number two, I guess, is I feel like if I don't write down the questions somewhere, they'll just be like rattling around in my head all the time, and, I'll, and I might worry that I might forget a good one. I could just kind of get it out <laughs> and then forget about it for a while, and then maybe come back to it one day. Yeah, math month. Uh, you know, it. I'm, I'm tempted to just say like it was so. Oh, this is such a failure because I like did not do even 10% of the things I wanted to try. But um, but you know, the holidays and everything. I guess I shouldn't have expected too much from it. But it was a good. <laughs> you did pick December. Now that I think about it, yeah. Yeah, um, but it, it was a good starting off point. I guess that's really all it was supposed to be. I mean, it does seem like you've made a lot of progress in conquering the math anxiety. Maybe you're over, do you describe yourself as over your math anxiety now? Not, not no, not completely, but um, yeah, a lot of progress. Miles, thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk. Well, uh, likewise, interesting questions. Um, you've had a lot of interesting questions. Thanks for doing that. Now do we say bye-bye? You say goodbye, or... turn off the recording. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs>